back to the channel. Today's Friday, so it's a Return and Collecting Top 50 Countdown Drop Day, number 31. I hope you enjoy this. One of the greatest ballplayers of all time. Due to record-keeping issues, we're not sure exactly how good he was, but based on what people say that were around at the time, possibly the greatest of all time. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so number 31 on the list is Josh Gibson. I don't have any of his playing day cards because there's none that exist. There's only one true vintage card that has his likeness on it. It's a 1950 Toloteros, but uh, he had already passed away at that point when they made that card. So there are no playing days, Josh, Josh Gibson cards. So all I've had are these modern cards and they all have relics on them. The first is the uh, Pieces of Greatness, Josh Gibson card. Uh, this has a piece of seat from Griffith Stadium where he played. There's the back of it. Looks like the 1951 Bowman set in the back. The next one is a Bow Bowman Sterling. Um, this one has a piece of, I believe, uh, also a piece. Of, this one also has a piece of seat from uh, Griffith Stadium. <clears throat> and then this third one is the Legends card. This one actually has a piece of Josh Gibson's game used bat on it, which is really, really cool. Um, this one's out of, it's number 65 of 99. Here's the back of it from the Topps Relics. So, Josh Gibson was born December 21st, 1911 in Buena Vista, Georgia. His father moved the family to Pittsburgh when Josh was 12 for work at the Carnegie Steel Company. Josh was studying to become an electrician when he joined his first baseball team at age 16. He was working part-time as an elevator operator for Gemble's department store, so he was able to play for their baseball team. Shortly after he started playing for Gemble's, he was recruited to play for the semi-pro Pittsburgh Crawfords. A few years later, Gibson played an exhibition game with the Memphis Red Sox. The manager felt Gibson wasn't ready to play ball professionally. Bad call on his part. Later that year, Gibson was recruited by the Homestead Grays. Since records of his professional achievements were not great and his barnstorming records weren't kept, it's hard to truly understand how great Gibson was. There are numerous examples of him doing otherworldly things on the field, but nothing was officially recorded. For example, it was said he was said to have hit a home run at Yankee Stadium that landed two feet from the top bleacher wall. It's estimated that that shot was 580 feet. It is also claimed that runners would very rarely attempt to steal on him since he had such a powerful arm and would throw out almost anyone who tried. He won the Triple Crown twice. He won two World Series, three batting titles, and he was also an All-Star 12 of his 14 seasons. His recorded statistics were unbelievable. They include leading the league in runs five times, hits twice, doubles twice, home runs 11 times out of 14 seasons, RBI seven times, walks three times, batting average three times, including hitting a 466 in 1943, on-base um, percentage seven times, slugging percentage nine times, including a 974 in 1937, led the league in OPS eight times, including a 281 in 1943, and total bases six times, including 216 total bases in 1943, with only 249 at-bats. For his career, he had 166 recorded home runs, but estimates are closer to 800 if they include international and barnstorming play, um, which would technically make him the all-time home run leader, which is funny because when um, Bonds broke Aaron's record for most home runs in a career, they interviewed him and said, "You're the. Do you consider yourself the all-time home run champ?" I think they were referring to, do, "Does he feel like he's the all-time home run champ over Aaron because he obviously took steroids?" But he took it differently and said, "No, I'm not the all-time home run champ. I believe Josh Gibson to be." He had a 373 career batting average, so technically the highest of all time. He had a 458 on base percentage, so the third highest of all time. 718 slugging percentage, putting him the highest of all time a 1.176 OPS, highest of all time, and a 214 OPS plus, highest of all time. So since Negro League seasons are much shorter than Major League Baseball seasons, the percentages, I think, are much more relevant in this case than the actual like, career stats would be just because they played fewer games. Um, but if you think about the stats, you think about that on-base percentage and the slugging percentage and the OPS and the batting average and the home runs, uh, it's it's clear to see why people make the comparison between Babe Ruth and um, Josh Gibson. 
So when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, there were a lot of Negro League players that actually thought that Gibson should have been the one to do that. But either way, Gibson was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1972. Um, here's a few quotes about Gibson. Satchel Page said, you look for his weakness and while you're looking for it, he's liable to hit 45 home runs. Monty Irvin said, I played with Willie Mays, I played against Hank Aaron, they were tremendous players, but neither one of them were Josh Gibson. Walter Johnson, the great pitcher said, his name is Gibson, he can do everything. He hit the ball a mile, he catches so easily, he might as well be sitting in a rocking chair and he throws like a rifle. Buck O'Neill said, he's the greatest power hitter I ever saw. Carl Hubble said he's one of the greatest backstops in the history of baseball. Boy, how he can throw, and you know he can hit. But with all that, the thing I liked best about him was he was fast as grease lightning. Wade Hoyt said, Josh Gibson is the most valuable player in colored ball. Gibson earned his clouding reputation. He has one of the greatest throwing arms in any league. And Major League Baseball team owner Bill Veek said, Josh Gibson, at a minimum, is two Yogi Berras. So that's pretty impressive. So because of uh, the stupid gentleman's agreement in Major League Baseball for the first half of the, the 20th century, we'll never truly know Gibson's greatness. Personally, this robbed us of the history of knowing more about one of the all-time greats. Josh Gibson passed away on January 20th, 1947 of a stroke following uh, a fight with brain cancer. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed number 31, Josh Gibson, one of the greatest players of all time. It's a shame that baseball was segregated for so long, so we don't we won't really know how great he was. But from what everyone that saw him play said, he is possibly the greatest of all time. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you're subscribed to the channel, I appreciate your subscription. If you're not subscribed and you like the video, please subscribe. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon.